Good morning or afternoon or whatever it is right now. I'd like to present to you a whole bunch of standing waves. So I'm just gonna establish the ends of the string right here. And I'm gonna try to draw you some waves. So these will be waves on ropes with two closed ends. Or we could also call them fixed ends. Generally, they're known as one of those two things. I guess closed is more for tubes of air and fixed is more for ropes, but we can do what we can do. So first of all, I'd like to propose, since we know that a closed end begets a node, then we can't have any motion at the end. So first of all, I'd like to propose a node and a node and a node all through. That's a rope that's not moving. Ha ha, good joke, Dr. Schuster. Fine job. Then. The next says, I've got a node here and a node here, and what has to be in the middle? Why, of course, an anti-node, all right? And the next possibility is that I've got a node here and a node here, and, well, what's the next possibility? A slightly higher energy system might have one more node right smack in the middle, and so then it would go up, and then down and then up again. And the opposite state would be like that. That's the next possibility. So here we've got just one node, which is sort of, ha, whatever. Here we've got two nodes and an anti-node. Here we've got three nodes and two anti-nodes. The next state is probably gonna be a similar extension of that where we're gonna have two nodes there and not one node in the middle, but two nodes in the middle. So here we're gonna be going up and then down, and then up, and then down again. And the opposite state will be like this. So that's the next standing wave that's possible here. Now if you try to do, if you try to shake a rope at a frequency that's not a standing wave, then nothing serious will develop from this. This is why guitars sound as they do, because they make one note for a given tightness of the string, a given weight of the string, and a given length of the string. Those are the things that affect the sound of a guitar. I guess there's something to do with the structure of the body and how you're using a pickup and what the material of the string is, etc. But in general, that has small effect on the tone and this has an enormous effect on what frequency is actually made. So the next possibility would be this kind of a situation. I don't even know if we're gonna to need to go further. I've got two nodes in the middle and two at the ends right here. So I'm gonna need three nodes in the middle. That puts one here and one here and one here. We're going up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. Cool, you wanna do one more? <laughs> Let's just live it up. This is gonna be a mess. I'm supposed to have four nodes in the middle. I'll go boom, boom, boom. Boom, up and down and up and down and up and down and down and up and down and up and down and up. Okay, let's start our analysis of this sucker. This is called, oh, we gotta name these suckers really carefully. The first harmonic. This is called the first harmonic and this is called the second harmonic and this is called the third harmonic. Let's name them like that. First harmonic second harmonic, third, fourth, fifth. All right, <clears throat> let's analyze these suckers. Well, we've got, let's say, a separation of L. That's how long the string is. Never mind the fact that the string seems to be stretching a little bit when waves are formed. But that's what strings do. They do stretch a tiny bit. So I guess my question is, how much is L equal to? L is what fraction of a total wave? Maybe we'll go to this one here first, this L. Let's go, um, I'm gonna switch colors for my, for my calculations. L, you know what? Let's go to primrose, that was a really pleasant color. L is, uh, oh shoot, this is a complete wave, right? It's got a crest, it's got a trough, it hits equilibrium three times. Okay, so L is equal to lambda, the wavelength in this case right here. What about in this case? L in this case is equal to, what do you think? How much of a wave is right here? Ooh, how much of a wave is right here? Let's answer this sucker. How much of a wave is here? I guess this is half of a wave. Fair enough, but this right here, look at this. 
this is a full wave, and then how much more wave did we get? Well, we got another half of a wave. So this is three halves of a wave. How many waves is this? There's a wave. There's another one. So in this case, L is two lambda. What about here? We've got a wave, we've got another wave, and we've got a half. So this sucker, in this sucker, L is five halves lambda. But that's not what's interesting. Perhaps what's interesting is, oh shoot, perhaps what's interesting here is how much the wavelength is. So, we could switch colors again and say lambda here, what do you want to call it, lambda one? Want to call it lambda one? Let's just call it lambda one. Lambda one is 2L. A wavelength would require twice the length of string that I'm given for the first harmonic. And wavelength two, oh shoot, this is the second harmonic, a wavelength is exactly the length of the rope. There we go. And lambda three, lambda, oh man, lambda three, the wavelength is two thirds of the length. See the wavelength right here? The wavelength is two thirds of the total length. All I'm doing is I'm solving these equations right here for lambda, that's not so hard. And then lambda four, well I guess that's going to be, oh shoot, that's going to be, uh, oh man, L over two. That means my wavelength is half as big as the rope, yep, true. And then lambda five will be, oh shoot, this is going to be two fifths. L. What if I wrote these just slightly differently? This is 2 over 1 L. This is 2 over 2 L. This is 2 over 3 L. Are you with me? Isn't this cool? This is 2 over 4 L and this is 2 over 5 L. So we can generally say, let's get a nice bold blue to finish this off, the nth wave length for the nth harmonic is going to be two divided by n times L. And we can make one final statement, and that is the sound that comes out of this string. Dang, what if I were asked about frequency? You know that frequency relates to wavelength. Let's see, frequency has units of one over seconds. And this has units of, oh man, frequency has units of one over seconds and wavelength has units of meters, and speed has units of meters per second, and I need an equation that's got one over seconds. So what if I take V and I divide it by lambda? Then I'd have meters per second and I'd cancel out the seconds, and I'd get one over seconds. So this frequency must be V divided by lambda. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say then that the frequency of the nth one, very similar to this equation right here, I'm going to argue that the frequency of the nth harmonic, let's go green here, frequency of the nth harmonic is V, oh man, what am I gonna have to do? I'm gonna have to do V times N divided by two L. Do you see how I got that? I was looking at this equation right here, and I, uh, I guess I divided by it, and I uh, had a V in the equation. All right, cool. So this is the frequency of a guitar string. It depends on the speed of the wave, and that speed, oh shoot, there's so much physics going on here. That speed is something like the screw of the tension force divided by mu, you remember that? Yeah, it's something like that. And, um, it gets faster with more tension and slower with more mass per unit length. Sure. And then it also depends on which harmonic we've got going there. Chances are, if you pluck a guitar string gently, you're going to be in the first harmonic. If, it's only if you hit it really dramatically that you get these other harmonics developing. But they will all be in some combination. And the harder you hit it, the more of these higher energy harmonics you've got going. And then, you're gonna divide by two times the length of the string. So if you want a higher note, a higher frequency requires what length of string? Figure it out.